Hi, how's it going? So I decided I'd do just a super quick video on setting up the OpenGL environment in CMake, in VS Code. Um, quick disclaimer, there are a lot of ways to set up projects and obviously I can't enumerate through every single permutation. So I will say for Microsoft, Visual Studio is probably the, the best setup, the most robust. Just putting that out there. Um, there's plenty of information available on how to set up a Microsoft Visual Studio project. There's even a little demo of that in this same playlist. Um, but if you're interested, because it's sort of interesting, let's do this in CMake. So, oh yeah, another thing. Um, with this tutorial, it's not going to be polished. It's going to be just, it is what it is. Because I don't, I don't like when things are too polished. Anyway, so... If you were to look at the GitHub repo for any of the code in this series and download any of the folders, you'd probably get something like this. And um, I'm just going to do a few things here. So in these dependencies, we have this. Oh, it's gone. OK, yeah. If there's a, if there's a GLFW folder, delete it. OK, uh, build. Let's get rid of that. OK, build is gone. All right, let's right click, open that in Visual Studio Code. And so we got a few issues. One of the major issues right now is that we don't have GLFW. We deleted it, it's gone. So how do we add GLFW? Let's, let's do this sort of uh, in a more dynamic way. So I'll just open up a terminal and I'm going to make a git sub module. What that means is essentially we're going to download the GLFW code from GitHub and integrate it directly into our project. So we're not worrying about lib files or anything like that. So we'll initialize a git repository for this folder that's required to make a git sub module. And we'll go git sub module add and here is the GLFW repo. We'll just copy that URL, paste that there. Okay, so currently we have this GLFW folder that's been downloaded. And then we also have this git modules file. Now, if we click in here, we see we have a sub module called GLFW. Its path right now is here, GLFW, and that's the URL that maps to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this into the dependencies folder. And a cool way that we can do that is with uh, git move GLFW into dependencies. Hopefully I spelt that right. Dependencies, no. Sort of a weird word, isn't it? Dependencies. Okay, so now if we look in dependencies, we have GLFW right there. Okay, and if we look at Git modules, now the path has updated. So we know how to find GLFW. Excellent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look at this. I think this is pretty cool. So if we go um, Git submodule, I think it's I think it's just status. There we go. We see that this has been sort of set up for us. It's remembered the fetch operation, which was used for that uh, sub module. So if we were to, hmm, I'll get back to that. Just gonna, just gonna try a few things. So if we were to run this right now, it does some stuff. It, it does come up with an error. We'll deal with that later. I just want to try this. This might work, this might not. So I just want to get this GLFW folder and completely delete it. Okay, and now I'll run this again. Mm. Okay, let me let me fix up the other errors and see if see if we can recover this. So right, uh, here's our CMake lists folder uh, file. This describes basically the the setup of the project. And if we read this from top to bottom, we're specifying a version and going through a whole bunch of options. Now it says here, W extra warning extra 
is an unknown. Uh, let me just delete cache and reconfigure. Never hurts to set that up, but we still are going to have an issue here. And the issue is that all of these compiler flags, or most, a lot of them, are um, GNU compiler flags. So what I'll do is I'll just wrap this in an if statement. So we are only going to touch these flags if we are GNU. Okay, so that has compiled this, but as you can see, GLFW has not been recovered. So what we need to do is we also need to tell this project to care about GLFW. And the way we do that is with add subdirectory. So we'll add um, GLFW, but I'm going to put in another option. That option is exclude from all. And that is just going to make sure that, oh, oh, oh. what don't you like? Okay. 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 I think I, I think I remember this now. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Take it back. We're going to fix this. All right. So let's deal with this folder issue. So currently the issue is that the GLFW folder, yeah, it's, we downloaded it and everything. And then I just deleted it because I was feeling like having fun. So the way we can recover that is we go git sub module update. And I'm also going to pass in the recursive um, argument because I want it to look through folders inside folders, if that makes sense. Now I cross my fingers. Great. Now have a look at that. We, we checked out the GLFW thing. So now if we were to, whoops, no, don't. Now, if we were to run this again, you can see that we have no issues. Um, so far, so good. So we go to build. And if we look down here, it's actually building GLFW completely. And now down below, it's starting to build my project. And it even goes to run it. Now we do have a shader error and that's something to do with reading file paths. So if we wanna just quickly fix this up, what we can do, and this is sort of a hack, but everything good is a hack, I guess. Um, I'm just pasting the shaders folder into the, oh, wait a second, step that back a little bit before I do that. This must be a lot of fun to watch. Um, before I do that, I'm going to go to my app where I actually load in those shaders and I'm just going to get rid of. So wherever the program is, it will just be looking at the, like the folder it's in. Is there a folder in there called shaders? So I go ahead and build that. Let me go close that down. And now this is where I grab the shaders folder stick it somewhere, get the executable that we built, stick it somewhere as well, give that a go. And now this will just take a second. We'll just load in all of the models and things. And there we go. There's our program. It's working. Now, again, massive caveat here is that every system is going to be slightly different, I guess. So if this isn't working 100% the same way, you might have to fiddle around with things a little bit. Honestly, I think Visual Studio is a pretty good option in Windows. But yeah, and you've got a little preview of what the program is that we're going to be building later on. Okay, so this is all well and good, but there's even one more modification that we can make so that every time we build this project, it will automatically do that, that git sub module update. And I'm actually, yeah, I'm feeling like copy pasting. So I'm actually going to copy paste this from one of my other projects. Okay. So before I do this stuff, just get rid of that. Okay. So line by line, this is pretty much the standard tutorial code, which is available online for git sub module, but basically we just grab git. And then we check that we are in a valid Git project. 
and then we set this option. Okay, right down here. Okay, then we call submodule update. And then what we do is, whoops, what we do is we look through all of our registered submodules and fetch them if we need to. And then I guess if that fails and we've got an error code, nothing too fancy there. But the benefit now is that when I save this file, it automatically reconfigures. And then we see this submodule update line here. Okay, so we can go back in, get GLFW, just go delete that. Oh no, GLFW is gone. Not true, because we have automatic update. There we go, it gets updated. So, there we have it. Um, a few benefits to this, obviously, are that when we run the project, we are, you know, we can continually grab the most updated, up-to-date version of the code. Um, and it's also pretty compact, sort of like a, an N NPM system, the way it grabs things dynamically. Anyway, I have talked enough. I hope this has helped you. And I, hey, you know, if this scared you away from Visual Studio code, away to Visual Studio, th fair enough. I would understand it. All right. So I think that'll be it for now. Have a good one. Bye.